Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in today's feature, we're going to talk a little bit about a, a, a feature that kind of slipped under the radar with 2016, and, and that's the ability to create business rules based upon business process flows. Now, if you think about it, I mean, there's lots of reasons why you might want to change the requirement field record or field on a, on a record or, or an item or, you know, display an individual error message based upon what's happening within a business process flow. So one of the things that you have the capabilities to do is, you know, based upon the currently active business process flow that is on the form within the UI, you can actually have business business rules execute against that. You can also have it take into consideration things like the active stage. So based upon what stage is currently active, we can actually have the business rule evaluate and do some, some functionality. You can do it based upon the selected stage. So and remember, the selected stage and the active stage may not be the same. Um, and then also the stage category. So it gives you a few different options to go in and kind of consume how you want this information to work. So let's kind of examine what this looks like. So I just went in and opened up the default solution in my organization. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new business rule for the opportunity entity since it already has business process flows associated with it. I'm gonna call it sample. Then I'm gonna establish my condition. So in here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on add condition. And one of the fields that you'll see in here now is an option called business process. So this is what allows us to associate this with a specific business process. So now I've got basically if the business process equals, and I basically have two options here, equals or does not equal. And then for the type, I can basically choose either value or value with stage. And so this would give me the capabilities if I wanted to look at a specific stage, maybe based upon whether or not that stage was the active stage or the selected stage, it would give me the option to work with it from there. And then I can obviously pick the specific business process flow that I wanna work with. Now, in this case, I will go ahead and choose value with stage. So now I'm going to say, okay, if we're working with the lead to opportunity uh, sales business process flow and the active stage currently equals develop, this is what I want to do. And so you've got a couple of different options here as far as the stage goes. You can choose active stage or you can choose selected stage based upon those individual options. In this case, we'll just go ahead and say if the active stage equals develop. So then what do I want to do? in that situation. Okay, so in that situation, maybe I want to make a specific field required. So I would come in here and maybe say that the estimated close date needs to be set to business required. And then I'll come back down in here and say, if the business process flow does not equal develop. What do I want to do? Things set estimated close date. So very simplistic, but, but as you can see now, it gives us some options for interacting with this at an entity level. Now I would just very simply go ahead and save this and then activate the business process, uh, business rule, and I'd be ready to go. Now, a couple of things that you do want to keep in mind here is remember, well, from a business rule standpoint, you do have some specific options here. You have to have the scope set at all forms or on a specific form, or you can set the scope at a server level or at an entity level. And if you're setting the information at an entity level, remember that you don't necessarily have the same options available at a form level. Um, entity level is gonna execute server level, so you can't necessarily have items uh, based upon the business process flow in the selected stage or the stage category in the selected stage because everything is executing at a service level. Typically, a business process flow is gonna be executed when the business process uh, uh, rule of the basically it's going to be executed on the change of the business process if the rule is based upon the process and not stages or on the change of the business process or the change of the active stage based upon what it's doing or based upon when the stage is selected so based upon what you've chosen it's going to change those individual items accordingly from there so now that my bottom condition basically says if the active stage does not equal develop, I want to set the field uh, estimated close date to not business required. Now I'm going to go ahead and activate this.
and then let's go ahead and consume it in the application. So I'm going to go into sales leads, create a new lead, and we'll just go ahead and I'll just call this TOD sample name Mark Anderson. And now just for illustration purposes, I'll go ahead and save the lead. We'll qualify the lead. It'll create the opportunity. Since the opportunity is in the develop stage, the estimated close date is required. I'm going to go ahead and enter an estimated close date into there. Now if I advance to the next stage, now you'll see that changes because now it's it's basically gone back and modified that from there. So it's just a very easy way that you can consume this information as you're moving forward. So that's going to do it for today. Like I said, just a real quick one, but it was kind of a neat one that I wanted to at least bring out and show to everybody. But I think if you play with it a lot, you'll find some kind of neat options um, available to you as you're working forward. So again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek, and I just want to say, hey, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Take care and have a good one.